Welcome to MCP Night. We have an absolutely packed house here. Thank you all for turning up on a Wednesday. We have even more people in the overflow space. There's people down the block. Thank you all for coming. We had no idea you were all going to show up. We have an amazing, amazing program for you tonight. We're going to have a ton of demos. Here's the schedule for the evening. We're going to start off talking a little bit about what we've been building at WorkOS around AI specifically and MCP. We're also going to have, after that, a ton of lightning demos from different companies, including Vercel, Cloudflare, Sentry, and more. We're going to follow that with a panel with several people who have been working kind of at the boundaries of where MCP is going, specifically around authentication, identity, how MCP servers connect, um, which is changing rapidly, as we all know. And then at the end of all of this, we will go right outside those doors, and we're throwing you guys a party at the end. Can't wait for that. All right. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to chat about a little bit is WorkOS. You guys might know about WorkOS, or maybe not. You also might know what we're, what we're doing in the AI space and why we're holding this event uh, generally. I want to bring it back to probably how most of you have thought about startups and building products. Quick show of hands, how many of the audience here are builders, founders, maybe people early at a startup? Yeah, a ton of you. Right, yeah, obviously. So you're very familiar with this, the startup playbook. Step one, you build your product and you launch, and you try to get those initial users. If you're lucky, you'll grow and get that early product market fit, where people start sharing your product through word of mouth, maybe through sites like Hacker News or Twitter or Product Hunt. You'll continue to grow and grow and grow, and then eventually, you can hopefully monetize it and turn it into a business where you can hire more people and continue growing and scaling. And this is really the story of not just um, AI, but just generally SaaS out there in the world. The way WorkOS fits into this is that we help make your app enterprise ready. So as you're going up this trajectory, as you're growing to scale, we help you get bigger and bigger customers and solve all of those problems around kind of compliance, authentication, encryption, all the things that you need in order to grow, grow your business. And the reason why we're talking about AI today and why we're so interested in this is we've noticed that these AI products, they grow insanely fast. I'm talking like straight up growth curve. You know, if you look at a company like Cursor, the speed at which they went from zero to 100 million in revenue and then to several hundred million in revenue was like unthinkable pre previous years. Like people didn't even think companies could grow this fast, totally blowing them out of the water. And it's not just Cursor, it's really everybody building in the AI space, we're seeing this growth potential. So we at WorkOS are very excited about this. We've been supporting a ton of these companies. And what we're realizing is that WorkOS is the perfect product for AI companies to grow and scale. These breakout startups end up being built on WorkOS and end up becoming our fastest growing customers. Whether they're building chatbots for LLM, new marketing tools, agentic systems, things around MCP, they grow crazy, crazy fast. And it's not just the small guys. They're built on WorkOS and allows them to grow and scale faster. So even though we're an infrastructure company, we're not training foundational models, people don't necessarily think about us as an AI company, it turns out we actually are serving some of the most exciting AI companies out there and helping them grow and scale. How do we do this? Like, what does WorkOS actually do? Well, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a handful of things that you need for those enterprise customers. The first thing is often identity, identity and access management. Every app needs to know who you are. You need to be able to log in and have different permissions associated with that. Also very relevant for MCP servers. We'll talk about that later. Second, observability. What is this thing doing? What is this app doing? What are the users doing inside of it? IT admins care a lot about this, and it's especially important in the world of agentic workers where you might not have an actual person on the other side. It's just an LM going crazy doing a bunch of stuff. So you need to have observability, visibility into it in the form of audit logs. Third, fraud and abuse. It turns out with AI systems, you can actually create more fraud, more fake signups, more behaviors. The CAPTCHA is dead. We've blown past the Turing test. It's no longer a thing. And so WorkOS, we've built products here to help detect fraud, non-human activity, behaviors that are you know, maybe unsavory or just fraudulent. For example, we have a product called Radar, and this blocks tons of people trying to get free cursor accounts, actually. Tons of bots, free signups, distinguished between you know, AI and human, human actors. The last thing here, compliance. Not maybe the most exciting word. We do this largely through encryption. We have a product called Vault that helps people encrypt PII. So it's really all these components under the hood that allow you to continue focus on building your app and taking it up market and satisfy those needs from you know, enterprise IT. The end result here is that you can go sell your product to bigger and bigger businesses. 
um, which at the end of the day is what propels your business, propels your company, and lets you continue new growing. We've been doing this for a while. If you haven't heard about WorkOS, we're over six years old. We're operating at scale. We do over 50 million API requests per day. We're connected to over 25,000 different enterprise environments, different enterprise organizations. So pretty much everybody out there. And we do this with over five nines of uptime, um, which is really, really, really hard. Uh, four nines is usually the industry standard. And we do this for our customers so they can build these products and scale them you know, to, their, uh, to their extreme, extreme growth. So that's a bit about WorkOS. Here tonight, what we're here to talk about, though, is MCP. So MCP, yeah. Give it up for acronyms. We love acronyms at WorkOS. It's all over the, all over the place. MCP, Model Context Protocol. I'm assuming you all probably know what this is, unless you maybe just like wandered in off the street, which there probably are people here that did that. Um, but MCP, at the end of the day, what does it let you do? Well, really, MCP enables AI to integrate with your app. So your app that you've built, whatever that app is, it could be a design tool, it could be a thing for ordering pizza, it could be access to a CRM or a business system. MCP is a way to connect to those systems and expose those resources and those tools to these AI products that are being built um, by, by many different companies. You know, MCP is a protocol not, like some of the, not unlike some of the ones that we've had in the past. Starting off years ago, you might have heard of TCP, the foundational backbone of the internet. TCP is what everything runs on top if it was developed in the era of ARPANET. Next came HTTP, the hyper hypertext transfer protocol. When you type that into your browser, HTTP colon slash slash, you're actually connecting to those browser pages over this protocol. That's how you get HTML and CSS and images back. Next came REST, representational state transfer. It's a big mouthful. This is really how modern APIs work. If you've ever built an integration with something like Stripe or Twilio using JSON objects and REST endpoints, that's really the structure around REST. And it layers on top of all these things, right? And then today, and actually in, in order to allow uh, your applications to interface with these AI systems, we need a different protocol with different semantics, and that's MCP. So what we're really, really excited about is just like how WorkOS has been making your app enterprise ready for many years, we now can work to make your MCP enterprise ready. And what this really means is actually pulling the functionality out of your MCP server that might be those things that uh, you know, you don't want to build or that have a lot of security or compliance bits around it or your customer might want to control in some way and providing you those building blocks in terms of functionality um, so you can just focus on building the AI pieces. In a way, WorkOS is a module that sits in between your app and these external systems. At the end of the day, becoming enterprise ready, it all starts with identity. How people log in, whether they're people at all or their systems and how they connect. Security is really about who is on the other side of that protocol, of that wire. So today we're really excited to give a brief demo of something we've been working on for a while. I mentioned earlier that we have a whole product around doing authentication identity. It's called AuthKit. If you've signed a cursor, you've signed in through AuthKit. That login page is actually WorkOS. And today, to give you a sneak peek of WorkOS AuthKit for MCP, we'll have a demo from someone from WorkOS. I want to talk about really quick before we bring them up, actually how this works, just, just as a little preamble. So, who here is familiar with OAuth? OK. Who here knows all the details of the OAuth 2.1 spec? OK, he does. Yeah, Aaron does. Um, probably not most people. So in OAuth, typically how it works, if you think about connecting to um, you know, something like Facebook Connect, right? Facebook acts as an OAuth authorization server. And it really does two things. First, it proves you are who you say you are. So you can say, I have this Facebook profile, and the identity comes back from it. That's the first step. And then the second thing is Facebook actually gives you access to resources. So if you want to you know, get photos or images or things like that from someone's Facebook profile, you can do it. You can do it that way. The same thing with, with pretty much every OAuth system that's out there. Recently, there's been changes to, to OAuth to expand it so we can separate these two out. And this small distinction is actually the biggest change happening in OAuth to enable this MCP identity future. What this allows is for AuthKit, WorkOS AuthKit, to act as the authorization server so it's proving a person is who they say they are, or maybe a bot, or an agent, or something else. So WorkOS handles the full identity side. And then your code, your MCP, can act as the resource server, providing tools, functionality, API calls, whatever. 
And this separation is really the key to bringing identity on MCP into the modern era. So I think the best way to show this stuff is with a live demo. What do you think? <laughs> All right. And to show this, please welcome Cameron from WorkOS to the stage. <laughs> Woo! Hey, everybody. Uh, okay, so yeah, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about MCP, we were talking about like installing something on your local laptop, and it was super cool, but it didn't let you, you know, it didn't integrate with the web, it didn't work on your phone, authentication was really weird, you know, it typically involved like whispering softly into the chat interface with your uh, API keys. And so um, it's come a long ways, like now we have remote MCP servers that let MCP work everywhere, and the MCP auth spec, like Michael was saying, has like, you know, introduced more normal auth flows where your uh, MCP server is the resource server, auth kits your authorization server, and the MCP client is doing all the uh, OAuth client work. Um, so we thought it'd be really cool, like everyone here has an app, not everyone has built MCP into it yet, so we thought we'd take like an off-the-shelf app and just add MCP to it which is like pretty low drama these days. Um, so we have just like a, we grabbed a next commerce kind of template. We threw it up on mcp.shop. Uh, so please take a look. Um, we, the, the modifications we made here is we added AuthKit for sign in. Um, we shrunk it down to just a single product because uh, that's all we sell. And then we replace the web checkout with um, this order with AI button, and it teaches you how to uh, add MCP shop as an MCC, MCP server to your favorite chat client. So like we've got um, Claude integration instructions. They support remote MCP servers right now. Or if your favorite client doesn't yet, we've got instructions for using MCP remote. So that will work with like Goose, Cursor, Zed, what, what have you. Um, okay, I want to look at like actual code here. So we have added um, an MCP route to our next app, and it's it's pretty lightweight. We pulled in like the normal library code for getting orders and products. Uh, we have this with auth kit wrapper to provide authentication, and then we're using Vercel's new MCP adapter. I think they're going to demo it, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Um, but basically, we get a server. This is like a model context protocol server object from the TypeScript SDK. We wrap it in with AuthKit, and that's going to give us this auth context. That'll have like the user that signed in, uh, access token, claims, all that kind of stuff. And then we just define tools on the server. So we, we have one to list the inventory. Uh, it, basically, any tool, same process. You give it a name. You give it a big, long description. Better descriptions work better with LLMs, as you all know. And, and then we return some content. So in this case, we are able to share our like web part of the code with our MCP server. Uh, I've got another tool to buy the items. Um, and again, it's just calling my regular place order function. I'm passing a user that I get from AuthKit. And there's one final tool to list the orders that have been placed. Again, it's authenticated. That's really important so that you can't see like other people's orders. Um, let's try it. Uh, so I've got Claude here. I've already added mcp.shop as an integration. This is a step you would have to do. Um, but basically, when you add a remote server to your favorite chat client, it will go out and do like an OAuth dynamic registration with your authentication service, so AuthKit in this case. Um, and then the user still needs to connect. That's the login process. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that now. Connect will take me to AuthKit. Looks great. I'm going to continue with Google. And I will give Claude access to my account. OK. Hey, I hear WorkOS is giving out sweet MCP t-shirts. Delay feels really long up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, okay, okay, we're checking the inventory. Great, there is one product available. Okay, would you like me to order it? Heck yeah, I would. 
Okay, so we're gonna give it some info. Large work OS one two three MCP Street SFCA. All right, we're gonna buy it. Thank goodness. And just to tempt fate one more time, we'll we'll exercise that last tool. Hmm, are you sure that order went through? All right, so um, MCP, actually really easy to add to your app. Uh, please, everyone, integrate with our little mcp.shop and get yourself a t-shirt, and then come talk to us about using AuthKit in your app. Uh, back to you, MG. Awesome. Another round of applause for Cameron, live demo. Kicking off the night strong. Doing live demos with LLMs is always a little nerve wracking, <laughs> but incredible to see. So what you saw there was adding MCP to an existing app. We gave an example that's e-commerce, but it could be whatever you've already built, a communication tool, a design tool, really whatever you already have as a service. If you're using AuthKit, it's just literally one you know, checkbox to turn on. And that example that we showed with mcp.shop, this is actually a real site. So if all of you want to go and add this to your favorite MCP server, you can go get a free t-shirt, uh, at least until we run out of t-shirts or money. So please do that. Please stress test our integration and then add it to your own product. I mentioned earlier about that growth curve, right? That growth curve where companies uh, initially launch, you get product market fit, and then eventually you monetize your users. When we think about launching, we really think about launching the people. You know, you build an app, you spend a lot of time crafting it, you're ready to hit the show HN button or you know, put, it on, put it on product hunt. And that's really the way that people interact today. We, we launch products, we get individuals to use it, it spreads through word of mouth, you get more people to use it and more people to use it and more people to use it. But this might not be the way that people actually discover and interface with apps in the future. Today we've been talking a lot about MCP, but there's a wider conversation around just building agents, AI systems that work with people on behalf of people or maybe even independently from people. And the reality is your products, your apps are gonna to need to interface with these AI systems to stay relevant. People might have multiple different agents that are working across multiple different services in coordinating and orchestrating. Your app might just be one piece of that puzzle. And if this sounds weird, it definitely is. It's pretty different than how we built software in the past, but it's super, super, super powerful to be able to compose these things together. I think this is gonna be one of the most exciting things in software engineering in the next several years. We think this is gonna end up being really, really big. And in fact, if today 95% of your users are coming as people, and maybe 5% as traffic or bots or MCP, that actually might start to invert, where maybe it's like 50-50, or maybe at some point it's 90, 95%, or maybe even 100% of your traffic is through those AI systems. You might build a product only for AI agents. And in order to do this, you'll need a way to actually build it, to scale it, to manage those identities. And this is really what we've been working on at WorkOS for these AI products, where WorkOS can sit in between your application and the identities of these LLM systems, chat products, agents, whatever. And at the end of the day, it'll just work and let you figure out, uh, spend your time building actually the features that, that users care about, human or non-human. WorkOS, in a sense, will be the central point for all of these things to connect together to your app and we think it's gonna continue to grow and get really, really, really big. So we're super excited for you all to play around with this. If you're building MCP for the enterprise, please get in touch with us. We'd love for you to start using some of this. Give us feedback. You can make your app enterprise ready with WorkOS. Great. With that, thanks so much. We're gonna transition to doing some lightning demos. Uh, what do you guys think? You ready to see some, some cool stuff? We have a ton of demos to get through. Our goal here is to do them for five minutes. So uh, it's gonna be a bit of a speed run. Demo will come up, you know, hopefully spend a few minutes showing off their stuff, talking through it. If we have time, we will do like one or two questions. So have your questions ready to go and ready to fire. Uh, but at the five minute mark, they're getting thrown off the stage. So for our first demoer, please welcome Kylie from Cloudflare. 